5 amino one mq is becoming a really popular compound as you're able to burn fat while preserving muscle and it even has longevity properties too. But there's a drawback, it's very expensive. So in this video, we're gonna explore ways to maximize your results with 5 amino one mq as well as establish what kind of response you'd have before you even take it. First of all, let's cover what 5 amino one mq is. It's a small molecule that inhibits NMMT, nicotinamide N-methyltransferase, and this key enzyme is responsible for consuming NAD+. It also creates methyl waste using SAMe, so that can blunt methylation, and it just goes up with age, uh, also obesity and insulin resistance. So by inhibiting NMMT, you can boost NAD plus availability. So it has all kinds of ramifications for not just energy, but uh, DNA repair as well. And then it goes crosses further into, you know, supporting methylation as well as increasing energy expenditure in fat cells. But with NMMT, you know, you don't want to have it too low. So I'll get onto that in a minute because it does have some vasoprotective properties as well as anti-inflammatory. So in terms of fat loss, it activates AMPK, therefore promoting fat oxidization and it's been shown to reduce uh, white adipose tissue in mice. In terms of muscle preservation and growth, uh, NMMT expression has been shown to be increased in aged muscle, so that can help there. Also boost uh, muscle stem cell activity. On top of that, because you're enhancing NAD salvage, that's further boosting recovery and energy metabolism for those muscles. To touch further on its longevity benefits, you're boosting NAD plus availability, so you're not uh, directly increasing nicotinamide, which can inhibit SIRT1, that longevity gene, at high doses. And at the same time, you're preserving your methyl donors, so that can support healthy epigenetics. And then indirectly, by having more NAD plus, you're supporting uh, DNA repair as you're activating those sirtuins. But how do you know if you need to inhibit NMMT? Obviously, it goes up with age. Uh, a lot of people just trial and error. They will try the five amino. Some people report they don't get too much of a response unless they go really high with a dose. Other people, um, now in the last four months, you can actually test your level. There's a metabolite called 1MNA. And so certainly if you're in that top 90th percentile, that's where you see a huge benefit by taking a 5 amino one mq A lot of people just would rather spend all their money on supplements, but I think there, there's a healthy balance to be made. By doing diagnostics, then you can kind of save money in the long term because you see your response to these things. As mentioned before, there's other indicators for inhibiting NMMT, like insulin resistance, so you could measure your fasting insulin, or just look at your HbA1c if that's a bit on the high side. Obviously obesity too, so if you carry a lot of body fat, then that's another indicator. One natural thing I do all year round, which is an NMMT inhibitor, is have a lot of green tea. I have three big strong cups a day, and so what that does is also not just inhibits NMMT, it's down to the EGCG found in green tea, and it's also a myostatin inhibitor, and myostatin prevents your muscles from uh, just uh, building and building. And some people have a mutation in that gene, that's why they're able to put on a bit more muscle. That's only a mild myostatin inhibitor. It still synergizes well with 5-amino-1-MQ for preserving that lean muscle mass. Check out our 12-month rejuvenation program where every three months we look at 225 different biomarkers and get your future vitality optimized. There's even a six-month break clause if your situation was to change. What else can you do to maximize efficiency of your NAD salvage pathway and get the most out of 5-amino? Well, it's also, uh, you've got this, the inflammatory enzyme that takes up a lot of the NAD+, and that's called CD38. And various different lifestyle factors play a role, like alcohol consumption significantly drives up CD38. And then you've got things that can help lower it, like apigenin, which I do, it's in the evening because it also helps with GABA production. You also want to do things to increase NAMPT, which is a rate-limiting enzyme. It converts nicotinamide into MNN. So uh, one of the most known things that does that is uh, uh, alpha lipoic acid, or another form of it is the, the R form, which is uh, stabilized as well. If you get that, that's a potent uh, thing that dries up NAMPT. Another thing is doing a fasted exercise as you're also activating AMPK, and then you see a further boosting fat burning at the same time. But yeah, you, you might be worried about burning muscle, and so obviously 5-amino is muscle protective, but that's where another interesting supplement comes in is L-carnitine. There's obviously very, there's many different forms of it, but again, that can help with uh, cortisol-induced muscle uh, catabolism. So, but yeah, doing it in the morning. I even do have caffeine as well, which can, again, drive up cortisol. 
Um, but that, that's why I do all of that together. And a lot of people report back to me when they combine 5 minute one mq with L-carnitine, that's where they get a really good response at energy levels, fat loss, it just, uh, everything is amplified with that. So for my cycle of 5 amino, I just do it for 30 days straight, just doing 50 milligrams. I do it in the morning, you know, I generally exercise five days a week. And so I'll just do it, you know, my pre-workout mix of pills I take. And yeah, that seems to work for me. I'm gonna be testing my 1MNA level just to make sure, obviously, I don't wanna get my NMMT too low. Obviously, the amount of EGCG I have all year round is a possibility. And then moving forward, just testing that every quarter to see those fluctuations. But certainly, yeah, if you're in that 90th percentile, going even higher still, like 100 milligrams. I've had some people go even higher, like 150, but I think it gets very expensive then. If you're doing other things to optimize NMMT, like the EGCG, then that can keep the dose down. Other things to save on money is you can even, when you're on 5-amino, say if you're taking your precursors, you know, your MNN, NR, or even nicotinic acid, which is very cheap, you can actually, there's potential to even reduce your dose uh, because obviously you've got more NAD plus availability anyway. Again, precursors is another thing I'm testing moving forward with True Health, as well as markers of uh, nicotinic acid overload as well. I also do the supplement luteolin early in the morning, again for CD8 inhibition. In addition, it can support gut health, boost the immune system, and there's even emerging evidence that it can slow down grey hair. But out of the two, for CD38, I would pick apigenin. And the reason why is it's more bioavailable than luteolin. So those are some of my core supplements that allow me to get the most out of 5-amino-1-MQ at that 50 milligram dose. Again, some people might need a little bit more like 100. It just depends on your bar markers. And I get my 5-amino from Swiss Chems. I've been using them for well over a couple of years now. Even did my own independent testing on one of them. But another indicator is the actual color of it. 5-amino is meant to be, it's like a nice deep orange color. Another one I got from them was PQQ, and that's a really deep purple. I even put a tiny bit on my tongue, and my tongue was blue for hours and hours after. So if you use 5-amino yourself, then feel free to comment down below. I'm always interested to hear people's responses to it, uh, whatever kind of stack they're running with it. So if you like that video, then uh, check out this one on injectable L-carnitine, something that uh, transports long-chain fatty acids into the mitochondria and just has great synergy with 5-amino. Thanks for watching. See you next time.